game starts. All right. At this point in the show, we talk about players who you are lower on than consensus. And when I did my first mock draft um, a few weeks ago, I didn't have this guy in the first round. And a lot of people were like, what are you doing? This guy is a first round player. He has to be there. And some people are very high on this guy, even talking maybe lottery. And that is Ochai Agbaji, the 22-year-old guard, 6'6", from Kansas, who showed heaps of improvement throughout his college career. I am... Chuck, and maybe you have the th- same thought process here. I am always highly skeptical of players who really start to blow up and become big time draft prospects when they're three or four years older than the guys are going up against in college. And I know that Agbaji is a hard worker, great leadership, fantastic intangibles, and showed significant improvement. But the fact that that significant improvement came when he had that advantage over the guys that he was going up against gives me a little bit of pause on that level, much like Jimmy Fredette. Uh, Doug McDermott, um, even like a, a Buddy Heald who really only blew up when he was you know, 29 years old or whoever he was as a senior. So, okay, so you're down on Agbaji. Is it for similar reasons to that or what's your overall take here? Similar, uh, but not the exact same. I think that it is possible to pop, so to speak, in your junior or senior year and ride that into the NBA. I think as long as in those years you are truly dominating your competition, like no doubt physically overwhelming and dominating your competition, then it's okay. I mean, Keegan Murray is turning 22 and this was his breakout year, but you can see the difference in how Keegan dictates an entire game, especially on offense, though Keegan is a two-way player. Uh, With Agbaji, my concern is that he doesn't do that. I mean, he is still largely an off-ball specialist kind of player for Kansas. And if you even compare him to someone like uh, Buddy Heald, who I think would be a very optimistic outcome for him, when Buddy was at uh, Oklahoma, he like got up so many threes his senior year and his scoring was even more consistent than Oshai's was, uh, I guess, in the first half of the year. But he was also notably a better free throw shooter. So, you know, Oshai, I think, I can't remember this year if he ended up getting to 75% from the line nice. or not. 74. But 74. So that was his highest free throw percentage his whole college career. And for someone whose theory is, I'm going to be a shooter, that's why you draft me, you would want that touch to be a little bit better. And as a senior, the, the part of the age curve that really concerns me is that he hasn't added anything really meaningful to his game to round it out. Rebounds and assists have stayed stagnant and low. His defensive um, stats, again, have sort of not matched the athletic profile that I think that he enjoys as a prospect. And if you're a Kansas who, who knows how to develop that sort of stuff and you haven't really met the reputation that I think a lottery pick should have as a senior. That's why I'm lower on him. You're right about all those things. Assist rate is putrid. It's very low. And an assist to turnover ratio of 0.8 is, it's bad. Um, yeah, 0.6 blocks. Okay, he's a guard, but 0.9 steals. Like that that sort of low steal rate in 35 minutes a game is is definitely concerning. You know, 1.6 assists. Like he's almost doing the Ryan Anderson here and having you know, less than two and a half combined, combined assist steals and blocks. They are not good numbers to put together. And yes, he did shoot 41% from three, but as you mentioned, the free throw percentage at 74 is the best that he's had across four years in college, which is, again, somewhat of a red flag. And the question I'll always ask is, is if the shot doesn't go in, if it doesn't go in at this level in the NBA, what... What are you doing? What are you bringing? What are you hanging your hat on? Can you create? Can you run pick and roll? Can you defend? Can you help? Can you rebound? Can you do any of that? Or is it like the shot has to go in and I have to get a lot of them to provide any level of value? And and I'm a little bit there with him at the moment. It, it tied in with like, hey, you really only blew up when you were three, four years older than everybody else you're going up against. And that gives me that red flag. And I have moved him into my first round of my latest mock, but I'm not feeling particularly comfortable with it at the moment. Yeah, I think the this year, the reason why, I think I have him early, third, I have him right around the same spot. I think I technically have him in the 30s, but it would be one thing if he had this profile and he were 6'7", six, 6'8", six, but, you know, of course, with the way the NBA is going, the threshold for 
the height at which you really need to have guard skills is just going to get taller and taller and taller and taller. And Oshai is a bouncy athlete, but he's six five, and that's about what he is. And so it, 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 it's restating the same thing a little bit, but in this particular class, I don't know what you think of Jake LaRavia, for example, or Jabari Walker or Patrick Baldwin Jr. But there are guys who are six eight, six nine, who have these sort of questions and they're a little bit younger. And they present, I think, a bit more attractive um, profile than someone like Oshai, because at least they have the size. In the I, view. I had LaRavia and Agbaji next to each other in my last mock, and I will be having Jake ahead of him in the next one. I'm pretty confident uh, of doing that. One last question on Oshai is, you know, I'm going to preempt the comments that people are going to leave on this, on this show. And they say, well, Desmond Bain, as an older player who was picked at the end of the first round, and look at him now. Why can't Agbaji be Desmond Bain? Uh, because Desmond Bain ran point for TCU. I mean, he he ran their entire offense, I think, as a junior and as a senior. And I loved Bain. Um, but if right. you, I mean, if you would to, were to compare their assist percentages, it would be much different. Bain's steal percentage, I think, was over two for three or four years. His uh, free throw shooting was much more consistent. And as good as Abaji was this year, shooting 41% on a bunch of volume, Bain was at like 42%, 43% every single year, showed that he can do it off the dribble, uh, that he could do it off movement, heading either to his left or to his right. Um, Abaji's a good shooter. Bain's a great shooter. And Bain also had an athletic, really a physical profile that was very unique. Bain's not 6'8", but there was not a guy in that draft, pound for pound, who was stronger than Desmond Bain. And that, I had confidence that that was going to manifest itself in positive ways. Uh, and it did. And Abaji, again, no slouch. And everything you said at the top about his intangibles, very good kid, could catch on as like maybe a fifth starter, but more likely a sixth, seventh guy. And that's cool. And that's a good career. And to some people, that's worth the 18th pick. Uh, but in terms of expending draft capital, I would rather try to take a swing on someone who has a bit of a higher ceiling, in my opinion. Yeah, that's generally my um, approach as well when looking at these guys. But it's not to say, okay, I like Desmond Bain quite a bit as well. I think I had him around that 1920 mark in that draft as well. And obviously, he's you know even outperformed that despite him going a pick number 30. 